Bismillah, salatu wa sallam, rasulillah. Okay, let's continue. Uh, the last thing we did, the, the last thing we did, uh, the last session, I think was about uh, the CU. We are studying the CU. Uh, we saw a lot of things. The CU is not so simple. It's uh, fairly complicated. Uh, we talked about, uh, we uh, analyzed the three bits of uh, the, uh, the condition and at the same time the uh, addressing mode, the, 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 the three bits in the middle. They are responsible for uh, those two functions. For, for uh, those two functions, uh, we saw that this, uh, <coughs> uh, this decoder is used to decode the addressing mode, the addressing mode, <coughs> and, and we saw how the addressing mode will influence, will, uh, will force the output of the controlling signal of a multiple controlling signal we saw also how uh, decoding the bcc instruction we could uh, bascule to we could uh, shift to uh, uh, the condition mode the condition mode is involved with this uh, multiplexer and this uh, decoder the multiplexer uh, can verify uh, if the conditions are uh, met or not, he verify the conditions. Uh, we have these two entries are used to check the state of the AC. If it is uh, by these two entry inputs, we can verify if the uh, AC is greater than zero, equal to zero, or uh, less than zero. And we have uh, on, the, on those uh, three bit. Uh, uh, our three condition, our three condition. Uh, we talked uh, also about uh, what we call the far jump. The far jump is a jump when uh, we can uh, jump above uh, the uh, page limit. We can jump above the page limit. Uh, we are not restricted to jump inside one page, but we can uh, go to other pages to jump to other pages this is why we call it the far jump the far jump okay we stop it there we uh, talked about this decoder we uh, the function of this decoder is really simple it's very very simple it's the equivalent of uh, a nor gate that fires one only if we have three zeros in inputs if we have three zeros uh, in the three bits if we have three three zero, uh, zeros this decoder is a detector it can detect that we have three zeros and we'll output through uh, we'll output the value one just to say uh, he detects it, uh, it detects a, a far jump a far jump <coughs> Uh, globally, globally, this is what we did the last time. We can continue now and see uh, the other part concerning the decoding of the instructions. We have instructions here, we have eight instructions, and we will use a decoder to decode which instruction are, uh, are we using. We have a three bit for the, the instruction, the last three bit are used to decode instructions and we know that uh, we already uh, saw that uh, the instructions uh, are there we have uh, eight instructions we have eight instruction then and or xor add sub st branch each one with a different uh, binary code uh, when uh, one instruction is decoded, is decoded, the line is fired, the line is uh, turned on for the, for the exact instruction, for the chosen instruction. Uh, anyway, 
the the Jews of the instruction will be the entry of this part this part of the CU and also it is a combinational circuit this is a combinational circuit uh, you can do uh, the five step method to get this result the same result or you can uh, yes yes this is the only solution you have to do the five step method to get this uh, this result this result involves uh, prim uh, mainly five output five signal control ar0 ar1 ar2 ar3 and al a we have five we have five uh, I just want to make uh, a point here. This is different from Megatron. Megatron, we have different output. The, the others are all the same. These controls are all the same between Megatron and Gigatron. But those outputs are different from Megatron. We have to see that. We have to see that uh, in Megatron, the uh, we have six we have six we have s3 s2 s1 s0 m and cn we have those six outputs uh, you can see it's practically the same control controls uh, except those six why they are different because they are what we call the controlling signals they are the controlling signals of the ALU. And the ALU is different from uh, Gigatron and Megatron. In uh, Gigatron, they are using, uh, I will show you the, uh, the diagram. Uh, what is it? Schematics. I will show you briefly uh, the schematics of uh, the ALU. Uh, this is uh, this is the ALU. The, uh, the ALU in uh, Gigatron is uh, composed of ten of ten circuits. We have uh, mainly multiplexers. We have eight multiplexers, and we have two others. We have uh, two others, and the ALU is constructed this way. We have this table. You can see this table here. This table is. Uh, the table of what we call the, the functions of the ALU. We have all the functions here. You have to put the function code and you get what function you want. And we have the functions for all our instructions. We have our instructions here and this is the code to put to get what we need for our instruction. Anyway, this is always the same principle principle of uh, uh, of an, uh, an ALU. The ALU works this way. I will show you the course. In the course, for instance, we have the ALU. We have the ALU, we have this entry of the function to choose the function, and we have the table that contains the code for each table, uh, for each uh, function. The difference between Megatron and Gigatron, they have two different uh, ALU. We have this ALU for uh, Gigatron, this ALU for Gigatron, uh, constructed around uh, 10. Uh, ICs, 10 ICs, but in uh, Megatron it's different. In Megatron, the ALU used is another IC. We use only two ICs. We use the 74181. 74181, it's a different ALU. It's totally different. And its table, it's totally different. The table of this ALU, it's different. The table uh, I'm talking about, uh, the function table. The function table is different. 
this is what uh, even the number of uh, bits to get the function is different for the megatron we need six uh, but six bit to six bit here to get the function we have six bit for the function and for the gigatron we have five we have only five anyway in uh, megatron we uh, choose the two to select to, uh, to get only to put only two uh, value two uh, ICs two ICs just uh, for the purpose of minimizing minimizing the number of uh, ICs uh, on the circuit we used only two and the code for the functions are different uh, for instance the addition the code of the addition in those uh, two uh, in this ALU is different uh, from the code of the ALU of uh, of gigatron that's obvious uh, the most important point here is that uh, the ALU you need to create for uh, your uh, megatron should be i don't know uh, i will give you the freedom you have to choose you have to choose you can use uh, this one is difficult I don't advise you to use this one. Whatever you want, you can you, you can choose it. The ALU of Gigatron is uh, somehow difficult. It's complicated. Use uh, a lot of uh, a lot of uh, multiplexers, and the, the the functionality is not well clear. Not well clear. The use uh, in the other hand, uh, we used in Megatron. We used those two ICs. You can use them in your design of the megatron uh, using uh, chisel using chisel or you can take a, a, sim, a simplest method a simplest method you can use uh, the way how we design a lieu if you remember we studied uh, normally we studied uh, a simplest a simpler way uh, to design our use this method if you want if you wish is explained we have this uh, the course explained in the uh, in the exercises in the exercises you can see for for instance in the this is series zero uh, series sorry series one series one see one you have the exercises uh, which one exercises uh, six in exercise six, you can read that. You can read that, and uh, you have the explanation on how to design uh, how to design RU. Whatever RU, whatever you want, uh, it doesn't matter what kind of RU you can construct with that. We have a generic method to design any RU, any RU you want. This is the simplest method. You can use it if you want. You can use it if you want. It's very simple. The, I can explain it briefly. You have uh, to design an ALU. What you need, you need to design each operation individually. You have to design each operation individually. Uh, and uh, when you finish, you have to connect, connect all uh, the output of those operation on one big multiplexer. We have one big multiplexer. This is the output multiplexer. This multiplexer will choose the operation. And you have to order the, uh, the operations depending on the code here. This is the function. This is the function entry. This is the function entry and you can choose Sorry, where is it? And you can choose, here they are, and you can choose the code here depending on the order of the entry here. It's a very simple way to construct the ALU. It is totally different from the ALU of the Gigatron, even from the ALU of Megatron. This is the simplest way, and you have the choice. You have three methods to design the RU, you have three methods.
You have to choose one and uh, implement one of them. It's upon you. You have the responsibility to choose one. I can choose uh, in your place. You have to choose one, you have to implement it and see how it works. You have the freedom to choose one of the three. One of the three. Uh, but you have one implication. If you choose, uh, if you choose one uh, alu, you have to be careful of the code output from the uh, the CU to this alu. For instance, for instance, we have this combinational circuit. This combinational circuit will uh, decode. His operation is decoding. It's finding the code of the operation in the ALU depending on the instruction. What does that mean? I, I will repeat. This is important. This combinational circuit, it's, it's fairly simple. It's pretty simple. His job is decoding. Or transcoding, you, you, you can uh, you can use another term. Uh, is that in the input you, you you have to give it the instruction, and the job of this combinational circuit is to find the code to output for the ALU for each instruction. Each instruction correspond. A specific operation in the RU. For instance, we can see this in this table. We have to find the table. I don't remember uh, exactly where is the table. We have a table uh, of we, each instruction has its corresponding operation in the RU. And this table, where is this table? I have to remember where did I uh, see this table. Okay, this is the table. This is the table. We have the instruction LD. The RU should pass the, the data bus, the B value. Bus here means the B value. We, we can see it, we can see it. Where is it? For the load instruction, for the load instruction, the RU does nothing. It just pass the value of the bus. This is, this is the bus, data bus. He passed just the value. Uh, and it makes sense, uh, by the way. We have load. Load is to get the value generally from the RAM to the, uh, mainly to the AC, to the AC. Anyway, the job of the RU is to do this. Uh, the RU in this case do any operation and just pass through the value from the bus uh, data bus to the result bus. You can see that. This is the instruction RD. And you have to output the corresponding code for this operation. You have a specific code to do this. And the CU, if uh, he detects this instruction, should output this code. Okay, the same for the others. Uh, for the other code, we have, uh, for instance, uh, if uh, we have instructions and the RU should do an end operation between the AC and the bus. Okay, this is uh, the AC, this is the bus, and we have an end operation with the instruction end. The same for the others, we have the same scam for the other. The OR instruction, the same. The XOR, the same. The addition, the same. The subtraction, the same. We know that uh, each function inside the RU have, has a specific code for each operation. You have, uh, you have to match. You have to match. You have to match between the code of the instruction and the code of the function of the value. You have to get uh, to match the, this, uh, this, op this uh, the matching, this operation of matching is done by this uh, combinational 
what is it? What is it? By these combinational, what is it? Uh, combinational circuits. By these combinational circuits. It's pretty simple. Uh, you have to continue. You have to continue. You have a ST store. Store uh, passes the, the RC. Passes the, passes the value of RC through there. This is the store. And uh, the store normally, uh, the store normally, anyway, the value uh, passes this one, but the store normally, the value is passed through there with others, uh, others uh, controlling signals. Anyway, we have the last one. The last one. The last one is the branch. The branch, we know that. We know that. We have to use this operation. Minus RC. Minus RC. Can you tell me why we should uh, use that? This is the question. Can we... Can... Minus RC. Yeah, yes. Why, why the branch use minus RC? Why? Very good, very good. This is clear. You, we use this uh, just to detect the carry. This uh, in this situation, we can detect the carry, and the carry can give us this uh, important information if the RC is equal to zero or not. Very good. Okay, this is uh, this is it. You have this table. You have uh, to create a combinational circuit. To match this table, this combination of circuits detect uh, which instruction is uh, uh, going on and uh, will throw uh, the proper code, the proper code of uh, the function of the RU, depending of the RU uh, you choose it. You choose it. Dependent of the RU you choose it. Uh, you will get different. Uh, uh, different uh, combination of circuit for different audio for different uh, audio do you have questions is that clear it's very important yes it's clear yes okay that's very good that's very good uh, we practically finished we practically finished the uh, the cu uh, what's left we have the right e right e i think uh, is about uh, the ram this is the control signal about the right inside the RAM, the right in inside the RAM. You can see there that, where is it? Uh, where is it? You can see there that, that uh, we have an AND uh, operation here. This is not important, actually. This AND uh, is added by the designer just to meet uh, some timing constraint about the memory IC. The, the, the memory IC, memory IC uses uh, the clock. And there are some uh, timing to use the writing. I, uh, I don't want to explain that in details, but in this situation, this end is connected directly to the clock. We can see it is connected directly in the clock. That means that uh, the WE is fired, is put to one only if the clock is at zero. If we put zero here uh, and we negate zero with this bubble, we get one here, and this end is what we call the enable end. Enable end. Uh, that means when we have the clock, I have to design here. We have the signal of the clock. The signal of the clock is like this. The operations are done here. What we call uh, the how we call that the raising edge from montant the raising edge the raising edge 
the, the actions come uh, the actions of uh, the most of the components are done at this uh, at this moment at this moment for the uh, for the memory used by the IC of the memory used by Gigatron, you have to see the data sheet of the memory. You have to see the data sheet. We have the memory. Where is the memory? The memory is here. Uh, and, and I guess it is explained here. I don't remember exactly, but we have uh, some timing problems. We have some timing problems. And uh, for this reason, they are obliged uh, to add uh, to add an end uh, here this end forces the RAM to only write when the clock is at zero. It's here. The, 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 the writing on the RAM is done at this period. It's different. It's not looking for the, uh, the raising edge. It's looking for this, uh, for, this, uh, for this period, for this period of time. To understand that, you have to dive inside the data sheet of this ROM and understand what is the problem of the time. This problem is not our problem. In our implementation, we don't have this problem. We will use the, the, the language, uh, the, uh, the chisel language, and the, the representation of memory inside using chisel language. I guess it's different, I'm not sure, but I guess it's different, and we don't have this problem. Normally, normally, you will not uh, need uh, this gate. You will not uh, need uh, this uh, gate. Anyway, this gate, uh, uh, this uh, signal is used uh, to write. Uh, the most important thing, uh, this gate is used, uh, the, sorry, the signal is used to write uh, on the RAM. We know that we have only one instruction to write uh, on the RAM. Which one? We need an instruction, Linux Buffalo RAM. Which, Sir, uh, data, data bus. Uh, instruction, instruction. Which instruction uh, we are using this signal to write uh, inside the RAM? Uh, I don't remember. The instruction we have, uh, the instruction you have to remember, you have eight instructions. We have load, and, or, XOR, and, sub, store, and branch. Which one stores the value inside the RAM? It's obvious. It's simple. It's very simple. Uh, branch. Uh, no. The branch jams to another. Uh, you, have, you have to understand that. The branch instruction changes uh, the PC. The branch changes this. Change the address of the next instruction. The branch instruction. Yes, yes. Yes. Uh, I think uh, load uh, or not. The, the load is this, works like this. The load gets uh, the information from the RAM to, uh, to mainly the IC. This is the, uh, the flow of the data. This is the load. Globally, it's not always the case, but generally the load is this. Get the information from the RAM and put it on the IC. Maybe here, maybe here. anyway. But the, the general case in the IC. This is the load instruction. You have to understand the, the dynamic of uh, instructions. You have to understand how the instruction uh, instructions are executed. Okay, I will explain that. This is the, the moment to explain instructions. We have to understand that. We have the load. The load instructions. The load instruction is in any uh, processor. In any processor, the load has the job to get the information from the RAM and to put it in one register of the working registers. This, the load do this, takes the, the information from the RAM and put it in one register. Maybe this, the, 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 the most used case is IC. We have the, uh, for instance, we have the end. The end, the OR, the XOR, the end, uh, the add, sorry, and the sub, are all the same. 
They are arithmetic and logic operations, instructions, instruction. And the execution of uh, these instructions is always the same. We have uh, the value of B comes from the database, and we have uh, the, the A uh, operand comes from AC, and the operation is done here. Uh, it depends. And it can be AND, OR, XOR, AND, or SUB. Uh, it depends of which one, uh, of which instruction you choose. Anyway, suppose, for instance, we did an ADD instruction here. The ADD is executed, and we have the result here. Re the result is mainly saved in AC. But at the same time, you can save it on uh, Y or on X, on out, uh, depending, it depends on the instruction. But in the most case, the result is saved on IC, on IC. Okay, let's continue. Uh, what we are explaining here is the dynamic, the flow of the data for each instruction. We have the <coughs> the store instruction. The store instruction is the reverse, is the reverse of uh, the load instruction. That means uh, you have uh, the data in IC and you have uh, to store it on the RAM. To store it on uh, the RAM. This is the store instruction in any architecture. Uh, it is not specific to a gigatron. In any extraction, this is in any architecture. This is uh, the store instruction. You get uh, the information from uh, the internal registers, uh, and you have to save it on memory. You have to save it on uh, memory. And you have the last one, the branches. The branch is totally different. The branch generally don't use the RLU. The branch. Uh, is the job of the branch is to change the PC, is to change the PC and go to another instruction. Okay, I will repeat the, the, the question. Which instruction from those eight, uh, the, the, the right U, the right, where is it? Uh, the WE command is used. Uh, ST. Very good. ST. In the store. The only one in the store. This is when we have to store the data inside the RAM. Anyway, in this case, we can see it. We have to follow this signal. We have the signal comes from the store instruction. You have to see it. It comes from the store uh, instruction. We, we can activate it. Let's, let's try it. We have, a, we can change here. For instance, we have to check the, the store instruction is the number six. Uh, six, sorry. Six. The store is activated and you can see that here the, the WE is fired. WE is fired to store on the RAM. At the same time, you can follow the signal of SC goes to those two end. I talked about those two end. I said that those two end are enabled ends. That means if we have a store instructions, those two signals are not fired. They don't output the value one. They are not uh, fired. They are used for this, the, this end, this two end, uh, will disable the, this is the output register and the AC register to, to do writing. That, that, that makes sense. That makes sense. If we have, you have to understand that. Uh, it's, it's, it's pretty simple. If we have, if we have a, a store instruction, that means that the information is coming from here to here. This register and this one cannot write any value. 
cannot write any value. But at the same time, it is possible to write the value of AC here and here. You can do that. It depends on the addressing mode. It depends on this. It's different. It depends. Sure. Yes. It's making them Yes. They should be deactivated. It's uh, uh, it is mandatory. They should be deactivated. Why? À votre avis, pourquoi? Parce que end. Uh, no, this is when, because, uh, huh? because of uh, because uh, always uh, one selection. Uh, yes, yes. This is uh, because of the nature of store instruction. We are doing a store instruction. We are doing a store instruction. We don't have to change uh, the IC. And we don't have to change the output. We don't have the output the value because we are taking our value and make it on memory, store it on memory. But at the same time, you it's possible to save the value of AC here or here. It is possible. And how it is possible? It is possible because of this. Because of this, the addressing mods. If, for instance, in the store instruction, you uh, uh, the store instruction you use this addressing mode, you can you can save the x uh, inside x the value of ic, the value of uh, ic. I will give you an ex uh, a tough question. It's not a simple question. It's not a simple question. Why the value saved? inside x or y comes from ic why why the value is not coming for, for example from here the value because, saved uh, here in x and y comes from ic why because uh, is the last uh, result the last result not so exactly. uh, okay so ma ba yakhdam biha fil x w y uh, it's not exactly that. Yeah, the, the, the simple, the simple uh, answer is this: because we choose it. I see here. What is it? We choose it in the table of uh, what is it? The table, the table of uh, the table of the uh, the the RU functions. We choose it. I see here. You can see a store. The RU passes the value of uh, IC, and uh, the, the, this uh, this particular case you have to understand that huh? uh, it's not obvious. It's not. It it is ju uh, it is just uh, an arbitrary uh, arbitrary choice uh, done by the uh, the designer. Uh, you can you can normally not use that, and the the CPU would work uh, perfectly. This is a design choice. Uh, this is explained in uh, their videos. If you saw the, the, the video uh, that I gave you the last time, the designer, the, the two designers, uh, chose to do that. Choose it on the store instruction. Uh, they say, let's save the value of AC inside X and Y. This, uh, this, uh, that means that it's not important. It's not important here. It's just an additional information the more important is that you shouldn't modify the value of ic and the output output because you, you will change what happens outside and the ac it's important to save its value it's important to save its value uh, do you have questions can you repeat please uh, which part? Uh, the part of uh, this. Uh, this part. Uh, the, 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 this is not important. This is not important. The designers. The designers who designs Gigatron. They, they choose it. This. Yes. Uh, uh, they, they choose it. This particular uh, weird behavior. It's not normal. Weird behavior. They choose it. Uh, they said, let's save the value of x and y. Uh, in the store instruction, 
it is arbitrary. It's not. Uh, it's not an obvious. Uh, it's not uh, an obvious uh, operation. You can you can eliminate that, and the processor would work perfectly, because we know that the store instruction, the main operation of the store instruction, is to save the data inside the RAM. Uh, these those operations are not uh, important because we have a special instruction to save the value of x and y. It's just additional. And it's somehow weird. It's a quirk. It's a quirk. It's, some, it's somehow weird. It's not an uh, obvious instruction. Uh, did you understand that? Yes. Okay, good. Okay, this is the store. Uh, let's continue. Uh, okay, we get this. We get uh, this part. Uh, anyway, the store will block the use of the output and the IC register. Okay, let's continue. Which parts left? We have this part. The last two signals left are those one. We have PL and PH. And they are very important. They are the signal, the signals, sorry, used to command the PC. They are used to command the PC. They are used uh, to write uh, inside the PC. We talked about that the last time. The PC is about 16 bit and it is divided on two parts. We have the low part and we have the high part. The high part could be filled with Y and the low part could be changed or overwritten over uh, by the uh, database, by the database. Anyway, the PC is changed by the branch instruction. It is changed. It is changed by the branch instruction. Uh, if we analyze uh, analyze those two signals, we can see that we have an OR here to fire PL. PL is this. Are talking about this we are we are talking about uh, we are talking about the low part of the PC the low part mean the small jump the near jump it's not the far jump the near jump is a jump inside one page inside one page inside one page in this particular situation we can see we have an end, uh, we have, sorry, an R. We will follow the first signal. The first signal comes from our multiplexer. Our multiplexer, the job of our multiplexer is to verify if the condition is true or, or false. This is the BCC instruction. This is the BCC instruction. This multiplexer is only activated on a BCC instruction. For instance, we are in a, in a store instruction. It's not activated at all. It's not activated at all. Okay, let's uh, let's uh, put uh, a BCC instruction like this, and now we have activated our uh, multiplexer. In this case, uh, this uh, multiplexer can check ca can check the uh, the condition and uh, through uh, and fire and fire. Uh, uh, the signal of uh, PL. This this makes sense. This makes sense. And we have the OR. The other part is about the PH. I will explain that later. Uh, do you have question about this? This is very important. You have questions? Normally, it is clear. It's clear. It's clear. The, the this. Uh, PL is activated by the multiplexer of the condition. This is very clear. We have the PH. PH means the FAR instruction. The FAR instruction always uh, with the BCC instruction. We have a BCC instruction. We can see there that we have the BCC signal and this decoder. 
this decoder, we talked about this decoder, okay. this decoder will detect the far instruction. He fire when we have the far instruction. If we have a, a far instruction and we have a BTC instruction, we have a, a far jump. A far jump will change this, will change the high address. We change the high address using Y. You have to prepare Y before, before this instruction. This is the assembly language. Uh, the, uh, this is the idea of the assembly language. You have an instruction before uh, using the jump, uh, instruction to load the address of the page where you want to go. You have to do that before the execution of the of the fa jump file instruction. Do you understand that? Yes. The, yes. This is one of the use of the assembly language. You have to prepare for the to do a far jump. Uh, a far jump is a BCC instruction. You have before that you have to load uh, Y with the page the address of the page where you want to go. Anyway. If you have PH activated, normally you have to activate the PL. That means if you do an, a, jump, uh, a jump branch or a, a far jump, sorry, if you do a far jump, you are forced to, uh, to override the low part also. That means you have to uh, to replace the 16 bit, the, uh, the 16 bit, the all 16 bit of the PC counter. Do you see that? If we have so, uh, yes. So uh, when uh, change uh, the high part. Yes. Uh, 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 we finished about the CU. We explained everything about the CU. You have to understand, those parts are the parts used physically with Gigatron. This is, this is just, just a simulation of what is done using the Gigatron. This is a replication of what is done using Gigatron. Gigatron used those parts. Use those parts. But in Megatron, we change this. In Megatron, if we see the control unit inside the Megatron, you will see different thing. You will see what we call, what is it? You will see this part. This is totally different. To minimize all those ICs, we use it only three ICs. We use it uh, three ROMs, uh, three ROMs, and we have all the signals here. We have some different signals, like I uh, told you before about the RU. We have the RU, different signals in the RU. But practically the others, the signals are the same. Except for the, uh, you have this end. For the memory, we talked about that. The memory have, has uh, this, uh, this timing constraint. That should be that is specific to the the memory used inside the Megatron and Gigatron. It is exactly the same memory used in Megatron and Gigatron, and we have exactly the same signals. But why we choose it to use uh, uh, ROMs? We choose it to use ROMs to replace all those uh, circuitry. We changed all this circuitry using three ROMs. Why? I have to explain that. This is a specific technique. This is a specific technique. Uh, it's called, uh, how we call this technique? We call the, the lookup table. 
We call that the lookup table. It has a specific name. You can uh, che check that on the internet. Lookup. Tables. Lookup tables. What is a lookup table? We will do a small example. It's very simple. A lookup table is a, a table, it's a, a ROM, sorry. I will choose a, a ROM. This is a ROM. I will choose a small one. For instance, a two of two. Two of two. Two of two. We have the input. We have two bits of input and we have two bits of output. Two bits of output. And this ROM can do what we call, can replace, can output what we, pro what we call any truth table of a combinational circuit. What does that mean? Let's take this example. We have a combinational circuit. I will take uh, this combinational circuit, for instance, I will design it. Uh, let, for, let, uh, for instance, uh, let's do this. If we have this, uh, I have two entry okay we have it's it, it just an example we have uh, the first output a one o2 and we have two inputs e1 and I2. I2. Okay. I know this circuit. I know I worked with this circuit. I know the table of this circuit. You can check if you want. The truth table of this circuit is like this. You have. Uh, okay, you need more space. Okay. We have a truth table of a combinational circuit, of any combinational circuit. We have I1, I2, we have O1, O2, we have all the combinations, all the possibilities. And we will get normally one, one, zero, one, zero, zero, one. Uh, it's not important to verify that. You can verify that by yourself. Uh, if uh, I don't know if I uh, if I'm wrong, if I did mistake or not, I don't exactly remember the circuit. But it's not important. It's not important. It's not the the importance here of uh, if, if the circuit is, uh, is correct or not. The importance is the technique. We have this table, this truth table about uh, the truth table of this circuit. This circuit could be the same circuit that could be implemented using a ROM, using this ROM. And how you do that? You have to copy this table, the result, this table inside the ROM, inside the ROM. This represents the input of the ROM, the address, sorry, the cell address of the, in the ROM, and this is the, what we call the, uh, the, uh, what, what, what is inside the cell of ROM. The, the continent 
of the cell of the row. For instance, for the first cell, for the cell 00, we have this value. This value is 1. I can read it here. I can write it here, sorry. I can write it here. This is 00. zero. I will put 1. Uh, we have uh, the next one. We have uh, this one. We have the second cell, the cell with the address 1. We put the value 2. Here I will put the value 2. And uh, what do we have here? We have uh, this part. This is the third cell, the, 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 the cell with the address 2. I will put 2. I put 2. And this one is, uh, the last one is 1. And normally, we have our equivalent combinational circuit. And we can try that. We can try that. If you put 0, 0, uh, sorry, 0, 0, we get the value 1. This is exactly that. We get the value 1. If we put the value 2, uh, sorry, uh, 1, we get this value 10. This value 10. If we put here the value 2, we get the value 2. We get this. This is following exactly the same table. And if we put here uh, the value 3, I get this value, value 3. Get the value 3. This is what we call a lookup table. A lookup table is what? It is a memory used to replace any combinational circuit. You can do this technique on any combinational circuit. This is the technique called lookup table. It is called the lookup table. This, uh, now what we can say, this memory, this ROM, is the equivalent of this combinational circuit. They are equivalent. They are equivalent. They are equivalent. And we did the same technique. We did exactly the same technique. We know that this is a combinational circuit. This is a combinational circuit. And for this combinational circuit, we used a 3 RAM to mimic, to replace uh, those combinational circuits with ROMs. With ROMs. Why you choose to use a 3 instead of 1? Normally, uh, we need only 1, but we have a lot of signals there. We have a 21, we have, I don't remember, we have a lot of signals there. And you can see that from there. You can see that the number of inputs, the number of, uh, sorry, the number of outputs represent the size of one cell. We don't have we don't have a RAM of eight cells. It's impossible to find that in the ICs. It's impossible to find a ROM with uh, with eight cells. We found a ROM uh, we found uh, we used sorry a ROM, three ROMs, two, three ROMs uh, to get all the signals. Each ROM is about, I don't remember exactly. Okay, let's uh, see that on uh, the internet. Normally, each one. Uh, okay, I don't remember the, uh, the specific size of the ROM. If we have this one, for instance. We'll check on the internet. This is this is data sheets. This is you can see a sixty four multiply eight sixty four uh, K. 
for the cell is 8 bits each one is of 8 bits okay I have to check that again excuse me one minute okay don't remember exactly yes yes we can see that uh, we have a, a bus of 16 and the cell the the the, the, the width of the cell is 8 bit and we need it 3 3 multiplied by 8 is 24 is 24 is 24 that means that 8 plus 8 plus 8 we get all our signals we get all our signals uh, did you understand that this is very important to understand that did you get it yeah you get it very good very good it's not simple it's not simple this is the what we call the lookup table look up tables okay okay we finished that uh, 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 I suppose I uh, I suggest you you have the freedom to choose to choose which uh, technique to use to implement the IC you can choose this one the gigatron technique or the Megatron technique, but I'm sure that the Gigatron is uh, much more easier than the Gigatron, than the Megatron, sorry, than this one. The, the problem with this, when uh, you have to deal with this, you have to, uh, to, feel, to feel all the cells here. And it's not a simple uh, operation. You have to feel all the tables. All the ROMs, they are not small, they are big ROMs. And you have to, to fill all the table, all the truth table. The truth table is big, the truth table. Why it's big? Because you have... Uh, how many possibilities do we have? You have many possibilities. You have how much? You have eight... Eight... Uh... Two, two power eight. Two parties, yes. So yeah, you have uh, you have a lot of possibilities, and it's preferable to use this method. You have to you have the freedom to choose whatever you want, but this is the simplest one. This is the simplest one, but you have to be careful. You have to change this. This is not exactly the same. The the, the matching, the the combinational sequence that that do the matching between the instruction and between the ALU function should be different for each ALU. It depends on the ALU that you choose. Uh, this one also should be different. The others are, are exactly the same. You have to test, you have to test. Uh, your job is to do that. Your job is to do the design. I, I, I gave you the, an overview on how uh, Megatron works and you have uh, to do the, the design by yourself. You have this is your work. This is your work. This, you have, this is your job. You have to do that. You have to implement that using Chisen. Uh, implement uh, all that you have using Chisen. You will get, uh, of course, lots of problems. You have to face them. Sir. Uh, yes. Uh, لا لا ف... لا لا الاختلاف اسم الديفيرونس في هنا إيه. إيه بين ها... الاختلاف الاختلاف هنا ليه هنا هنا هذه هذه متعلقه بال... باليو اي ال تستعملها انت كل يو اي ال عندها الكود تاعها اما الكود تاع اليو اي ال تاع لا ديسيون تاع اليو اي ال الاولى اللي استعملناها في جيجاترون ماهوش هو نفسه ماهوش هو نفسه الكود تاع لا ديسيون في اليو اي ال دوزيام سي بور سا ما يصلحش هذا ال... هذا لو سيركل هذا ما يصلحش هذه لا بارتي اللي ما تصلحش لازم تاخذ واحد سبيسيال هو ما الشيز اللي خير تبعت تمسك فيه كومبيان بار سهله مره بالشيز اللي يعني يخدم لك اوتوماتيكمون. ايه يخدم. ايه سما سي تري سامبل، اتس فيري سامبل تو يوز تشيزل تو امبليمنت كومبينيشن سيركت. يو ويل سي يوزين هاي ليفل لانجويج تو تو امبليمنت ذات، اتس فيري فيري ايزي. اتس ماتش مور كومبليكيتد يوزين 
uh, software like this, the simulate, simulate, uh, the logic simulation, simul logic, sorry, logic simulator. It's more difficult to implement something like this than using a high-level language like Chisel or uh, or very or You will see that uh, it's very uh, simple. In the condition you understand, the, you will understand the language. You have to well understand the language. In this case, the the design of this. Uh, of all this architecture is, uh, becomes very simple becomes very simple uh, I think we have last one thing we have last one thing of difference between Megatron and Gigatron this is uh, this output system this output system I don't want to talk about that uh, this time now, I just when when you finish the other part, I can explain that because the output system, the output system, we have keyboard game and uh, gamepad in. We have uh, this uh, register for the output. We have all the system. Uh, it's it's preferable to finish the other parts. And we can continue with this one. This one, it's not difficult, but it depends on the others. You have to understand the, uh, the main core of the architecture. The input and output uh, part, we will see that when you finish the, uh, the, the, the main core. Uh, are you okay? Do you understand that? Yes, yes. We will left. It's not difficult. We will left the input output mechanism at the end. At the end. Yes. At the okay. end, when we finish the uh, the implementation of uh, of uh, the architecture. Do you have questions? No, continue. Uh, uh, actually, we finished. We finished the explanation. Uh, okay. I can give you the uh, the chapter two. What we have to do with the chapter two? Yes, please. Mm. Uh... I prepared the section of chapter two. Okay, I will give you this. Okay, in chapter two, you have uh, to talk about uh, HDL languages. Uh, you have, like usual, you have, uh, I forgot for the introduction and the conclusion. You have uh, an introduction and conclusion like usual. The chapter is called the hardware definition uh, description, sorry. Description languages, HDL uh, stands for Hardware Description Languages. Uh, you have to give uh, a definition. First, uh, the first point. The second point, you have to make the difference between the logic simulation and HDL. This is the logic simulation. This is the schematics, what we call the schematic. Logic, uh, logic simulation or what we call schematics. And you have the HDL. What is the difference? What are the advantages and disadvantages of both methods? Of both methods. You have to talk of the HDL synthesis process. How the HDL will generate, will generate the, uh, the hardware. This is like a compilation in the programming language, in, in, a, in a software programming language. This is the compilation process. You have to talk about this. Synthesis, synthesis process. It's like, it, it, it is the equivalent of the compilation process of the software part. You know the compilation, you go uh, through many operations. It is the same in the uh, HDL. It's, the, it's actually the same. You have to explain the different 
uh, the different steps, different steps. You have the simulation, you have to talk about the simulation. The simulation is very important in hardware. The simulation is the equivalent of uh, the debugging in uh, the hardware, in the software uh, languages. You have the simulation. The simulation, this is what we did here. This is a simulation. You have to try your circuit. You have to try your circuit. And it's an important part in the hardware. It is a very important part of the hardware. You have to talk about that, a different technique of simulation. We have the verification. The verification, uh, you have to, this is, uh, uh, this is the part when you have to verify the, your circuit, if it's working properly. You have, it's like uh, in, uh, you studied that, like uh, for instance uh, in software you did what we call the uh, how we call that sir uh, yes which uh, circuit uh, any circuit any circuit, any circuit. Uh, yes we have we are in a theoretical chapter we are talking in the uh, in the in the overall languages any hdl any hdl circuits have this part verification in HDL language, sorry, in HDL language, have this part of verification. Of verification, it's not. Uh, yes. Uh, we should talk about our uh, proper circuits or just no, any no, circuit. No, it's uh, about any circuit. It's about any circuit. Uh, for our uh, proper circuit, we will do that in the other chapters, in the final chapters, in the practice chapters, in the realization chapters. Yes, this is this is about uh, this is about any uh, language. Any language has this verification parts. Has verification parts. It's not specific to uh, to Chisel or our circuit. The the, the verification our, uh, of our circuit will be done in the last chapter. In the last chapter, uh, we have uh, this point. Uh, some HDL languages we have to uh, give. Uh, a brief description of the well-known, the most used HDL languages like Verilog, VHDL, uh, System C, etc., etc. I can give you some references. Uh, very, very. I don't remember how. Verilog. Sorry. Very log. Uh, VHDL, uh, System C, uh, you have uh, uh, Blue Spec, uh, Spec, you have uh, uh, Chisel, of, of course. You have a Chisel of our language, some HDL languages, and the last one. Yes, this is enough. This is enough. This is enough. This is, uh, try to rewrite that. Uh, you have to do that in 10 page. We need to left, uh, I don't know if uh, we can get that or not. We need to left five page for the monitor. For the monitor. If we can get uh, to, uh, to do the monitor. We will do our best to get uh, 10 pages. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. try to get, uh, it's not important if you get more, it's not, uh, it's not important. For the correction of the uh, chapter, I'm still doing it. I didn't get, get uh, much time this, uh, uh, this holiday. I'm working on it, the correction, I will send uh, you the correction uh, tomorrow, inshallah. The correction of the first chapter, but well, the modifications uh, to done on the first chapter. I'm uh, I'm working on it. I will tomorrow, inshallah, or or, or uh, Saturday, or, or or Sunday, inshallah. Okay. Do you have questions? No. You have no questions. Okay, now you have, uh, we, we uh, finished the explanation of uh, 
the overall architecture, you have to start uh, working on the implementation implementation of this uh, architecture. Sir, uh, yes. Uh, what do you mean? Uh, which uh, part? Uh, yes, implementation. Uh, if they be whatever you, the country. no the the, the, the whatever uh, uh, it's not very important but in general in general the first step is the alu the first step is the alu the second step right. the alu the alu is the first step uh, the the, the alu is simple you have just to assure to get those functions you have to remember that in page fifty five you have to get those functions those operations. You have eight operations. It's not difficult to, to create an ALU uh, to do that. The first step is the ALU. The second step is the data path. The, 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 the second step is uh, the data path, except, except the CU. Except the CU. You have to do that. It's not difficult to you. It's not difficult. It's, uh, it's, uh, it's simple. And the last is the CU. The CU is the most difficult. The CU, when we create the CU, you have to combine all the architecture. You have to combine all the architecture. Uh, for now, you have to choose this, uh, this data path, the Gigatron data path. After that, we will change it. We will change it. Uh, to add the, the input output. The difference between uh, the data path of Gigatron and Megatron are on the input output. The system of input output is different. But it, it would be easy to change it. Okay, for now, you have to work on this. You have to work on the data path of this. After that, you have to implement the CU. The CU is the most, is the most difficult part. Is the most difficult part. Uh, I forgot one thing, sorry, I forgot one thing. I forgot uh, the, uh, the clock. The working of the clock is different here. Uh, the clock is not uh, important in Chisel. It's not used at all. It's generated automatically. This is a good, this is a good thing. This is a good thing. Our clock, it's a simple clock. But with two outputs, we have clock one and clock two. Uh, those parts is not the, those uh, parts are not important. They are just using uh, for the control. For instance, uh, we have here the way to switch between the auto clock or the manual clock. The manual clock is uh, uh, is used in simulation. No, it's not in real uh, hardware. In simulation. You can work the clock manually by by the mouse. You have to click to uh, have to click like this to uh, to make the clock uh, works. We uh, have the receipt the receipt button to receipt your system to uh, to receipt your system, and you have those uh, main two outputs. We have clock one and clock two. Clock one is used mainly on register AR and register D, register IR, uh, IR and register D, and the clock uh, and the CU uh, and the CU and the clock two are used for the others. For the other others are register X, uh, register out, uh, register uh, X out, register IC. Uh, uh, shift etc etc the others why you have two clock uh, you have to understand that the first clock the second clock is the reverse of the first if we are, I will design I will uh, draw it if you have for instance this if you have this clock this is clock one this is clock one and this is uh, clock two They are reversed. They are reversed. That means the 
you know that the raising age is where we can do the operations. The raising age of the clock two is in the middle, in the middle of clock one. This is exactly in the middle. This is exactly in the middle. What does why we use that? We use that because the execution of one instruction is done on one clock cycle. The execution of all the instruction. If you have the instruction, the instruction we start here, and we get to the ROM. We have the instruction to decode, and we have the data here. And the data goes this way. Goes this way. We get finally we get the result. All of this, uh, all of this process is done on one cycle. To uh, to assure this uh, type of propagation, this type of propagation of information, we need we need two clock. The first one is used to save the data here. Here, okay, here to get the uh, the right uh, to get the right design and the right drawing is this. This is the clock of. Uh, uh, this is the clock of the first uh, the first uh, component, and the clock of the second components are there. Ah, uh, sorry, I forgot. the The PC uh, uh, also is uh, used with the first clock. The PC also is used for the first clock, and we have uh, those registers. Uh, are using the second clock are using the second clock you have to understand one thing one important thing second clock and the first clock we have here the first clock you have to understand one important thing the first clock is used here is used in for the first half we have this first half of the period. The first half of the period, the signal is propagating this way. We have this signal will propagate in the first half of period. In the second half of the period, with the clock two, because we have the, the rising age of the clock two, in the middle of the first period that means in the second period we have the second half of the propagation now the signal will propagate uh, propagate there with the clock two in the second we have two we have two separate uh, parts of propagation of propagation of the signal the first one is uh, initiated by clock one and the second one is initiated by clock two. The clock two uh, is the final part. And that repeats, of course. It is a loop. And that repeats. And that repeats. Do you understand that? This mechanism. Yes. Yes, okay. This mechanism is used in the, the real hardware. You have to make the decision of controlling the clock in chisel on the other hand it's different in chisel you don't have the clock the chisel will automatically by itself deduce the use of the clock you don't have i guess I don't, i'm not sure uh, 100 percent but i guess that chisel will do this job automatically the the management of the clock is used uh, automatically by chisel you don't need to decide to use two different clocks in chisel do you understand that yes okay this is good yeah you have just work 
it's left just to uh, you need uh, just to uh, implement uh, this architecture and try to test it uh, and uh, so on and so forth okay I guess uh, we have to stop here if you have uh, final questions final question it is the time to uh, Sir, uh, yes. the uh, output for Megatron. Yes. Ah, how do you handle it? We're not familiar with the Megatron. Ah, let them do it. We're not familiar with the Megatron. It's simple. Megatron has two registers. Two registers, maybe. Ah, after that, after that, we'll get into the architecture. We'll try it with the Megatron. We'll try it with the Megatron. This is the process. Uh, okay. Uh, so the, the, the idea is to implement the Gigatron now. You have to implement the data path of Gigatron. After that, it would be really easy to modify it to Gigatron. It's not difficult. It's not difficult. Okay, so we can build the, the Gigatron. Yeah. Yes, yes. You have to, uh, to start with, with Gigatron. You have to implement Gigatron. Okay. Okay. You have other questions? No, normally it's clear. Okay, thank you very much. I'll be confident. Uh, Salam alaikum, sahaf turkum. A bon courage. Shukran, salam alaikum.